I drew in, but there it creates um, there's a lag on our side, but not for the online students. So it, it'll it's all good. Okay. Anyway, draw in what you kind of think where you want it to be. Others you don't have to. It just does kind of help. And then think about like uh, what color you want your barn. Okay, because really you should have laid in enough of the ground where you're kind of ready to do that. Okay. But before I paint in the barn. Um, I'm going to do the fence first because it's in the background and like some trees around the barn first, you know, so we won't worry about that right away. But so we'll start with that. And then um, this is going to be a road, right? But it could be a river or water or something if you wanted to kind of change it up a little bit. So that's totally up to you too. Okay, so as I said before, that you bring down your colors, right? And you and then what happens is that, like in here, in this front part, they get kind of washy because we only did one layer. So just like I said for painting with Bob Ross, you, he does like a wet background. And then so you build it and you're working into a wet background. So first thing we have to do is we would have to continue laying in the ground. So if you didn't grab that matte medium, you should definitely do that. Um, where if you don't want to change the color, and your paint's fine, you can just lay in that matte medium. If you don't have matte medium, you can use water, but matte medium works better, which is why we have it in the classroom, okay? So, um, like if you, I already did this yesterday, but if you didn't do that, you should do that, and it's, it's not a big deal because we have that wet kind of um, background. Okay, so I use chalk on this, which is nice, because if I'm gonna do my fence now, um, I could just let the paint dry and then just like dust away that chalk. So um, you won't see those lines, they just go away, you know. So that's, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to erase them because that's what will happen. So, what's your offense? Okay, anyway, um, offense, nothing special about it, just got to paint it in, right? Okay, so it's easier to do a fence in the distance because then you can get away with mistakes and all that, right? So I'm gonna make up a kind of a brown. A lot of you are doing kind of a sunny day, um, so a brown would be a good color. Remember how you make brown with purple and yellow? Or I do orange and orange and a little bit of blue, right? Okay, so anyway, I got my brown. You could add a little black if you wanted, that's kind of up to you. I'm using my matte medium or water right to thin. And I'm using a smaller brush, obviously. And I'm just gonna kind of paint in. Okay, like I said, I didn't take my time too much on that. If you do it in the distance like that, you don't have to. So it can look like an old kind of barn fence and they're not perfect and sometimes the stumps rot and they fall over and you can draw some of that. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. You might you could add in a couple of leanings if you wanted. They don't have to be straight. So for this, I did not wet the background. It's not really necessary. I um, already have the background I want. I didn't have to do anything to it. I'm not even making sure this is perfect. I'm not making sure you can see a side to the post or anything like that. Okay, and then um, you can go work back into it and usually, and I would, where I would get a darker side. So I'm gonna pick up some black with matte medium, so it's kind of thin. And you can do a darker side or a lighter side, so. 
I usually try to add in some sort of like dimension. I'll add in a little shadow too, that'll help. Okay, so if you make a mistake, we can just add in some trees. No big deal. Right? There's no accidents. Happy little accidents. Happy little accidents. There are accidents. They're just happy. <laughs> right. No mistakes. That's what it is. Ah, I got to get it right. I hear there's a new Bob Ross documentary out there. I'll watch it. It's like the scandals of Bob Ross or something like that. The PBS and basically how they just profited on him. All right. So a shadow. A shadow will be really nice because um, if you want it to be a sunny day, the sun should be so bright that it should cast a shadow. If you want it to be a stormy day, you don't have to have as much of a shadow. But right now, my picture is kind of going sunny, so I'm just going to go with it. Even if you have a stormy day, um, you can still get shadows because the sun starts to come in, right? So I'm just going to mix up a dark color like I've done in the past, like a dark purple, purple blue. So it kind of matches my grass a little, so I got a little green kind of going on, kind of purple green. I don't know, whatever. Whatever color you do, it shouldn't be bad, as long as you're mixing the colors you've already used. And then um, <coughs> matte medium. I want a lot of matte medium on this. <coughs> so I want a lot of matte medium because I want it to be a glaze. I want it to just like be see-through, right? Like I don't want it to be a full-on color. So. And it's kind of nice to do that because it also helps plant the, the little posts. They don't just look like they're kind of floating there, you know. So I always kind of, I always add in a shadow. Always a good thing. Probably the number one thing you guys forget is a shadow, I'd say. Like all your little, you can draw in, like I do wildlife art. They have to create a character and then put it in an environment, you know. And like all their animals never have shadows. Okay, so um, I like the way that's looking, but maybe I messed up here and there. Maybe I don't like. Maybe I don't like some of this. They look too big or whatever. I'll just I'll just make trees. So I'll do that. Yeah, I got my purple green going on. Now I just kind of you know maybe here. I don't know. Maybe make some brush here and there. Like when I mean trees, I just mean like more brushy trees, not necessarily like a tree. But I can show you how to make a tree. <laughs> I usually pop in some trees here and there. Right, see, five bit. Um, okay. So like maybe you want some trees here and there. Usually around your barn, you get trees that pop up. You know, they're not like tilling the field and they, they get in there. Or along your fence line, you get little trees that get in there, you know, and the farmers don't get out. Rocks, stuff like that. You could always, like, do a lot of stuff. Um, in Illinois, there was usually one big oak in the middle of everyone's cornfield. Because if lightning struck, it was going to strike there, not their barn, right? So um, you could always do something like that. Okay, if you're going to do a tree, you can all practice this. Okay, so I have a thin brush which is just a thin round brush, and it's um, a good good idea, right? Okay, and then I load, I use the water and the matte medium and kind of load it up. So, and I'm gonna use more black. We'll just make a small thing. So I'm using um, water and matte medium and black, because I don't want my black 
actually is super heavy, so I'm just kind of thinning it. I could add in some color too if I wanted. But I'm not going to do that. Okay. So what I do is I kind of pick up the paint and then kind of, so you load your brush. Anytime someone says you're loading your brush, you're getting paint on it, but like, like enough to make the paint flow. Not just like a gob of paint. That doesn't mean loading the brush. Loading the brush means that you're filling the bristles with like fluid, right? You're painting fluid. That means loading and loading. So someone says that. That's what they mean. Okay. Anyway. So I'll pop in a tree. I don't know if it's like this bad, this bad, me there. So <laughs> what I do for a tree is I load the brush. And then depending on how the paint's on my brush, I usually start with a main trunk. Okay. But I don't do the branches. So like just a main trunk. And I go down as the main trunk. Okay. And then for the branches, I go up. All right. So down for the main trunk, but it gets kind of thick. So the branches, then I go from the tree and out and up. Okay. And even at that tip, and just kind of lift. You'll know if you loaded your brush right, and I kind of fill in that base a little bit, like make it look a little thicker here and there. But you know, make some kind of sprawl or something. But if you'll know if your paint, your brush has enough, if it's loaded right, if it's flowing. Like if you can do that much with the tree and not have to get more paint, you loaded the brush nicely. But you know, I'm kind of running out. I need to get some more, so I'll keep going. Okay. So anyway, not that you have to put a tree in. Okay, and it doesn't have to be bare, but you got to get the the tree first. Hello? Hey. Sure. Oh, sure, yeah. Yep. Uh, well, I guess there was some confusion. She thought we were painting that Friday and not the 21st. I'm like, no. So, yeah. They have a graduation party this weekend, which I did not know because we were told we could set up a week or two before. So I know I wish that was communicated. So, yeah. So unfortunately, I'm a little stressed because we're not going to get anything done. I mean, so that means like throughout the week, we're going to have to do some of those night, those evening, we're going to have to do some evenings. They didn't volunteer Saturday, that's why they all said Sunday, and I was like, no, <laughs> because, like, I'm already missing my, but, um, but, yeah, I don't know, I, um, I, sh I will go, we're gonna go, because we gotta get an idea of layout, and we gotta get tables, like, we have to have a, we have to draw a map, basically, and we have to get tables, and we have to figure it out. a thing if we have a ton of people and maybe I just make them do some leg work in the art room because they do come down during study during their study hall and then I have um, um, we can do the front area we could get that all organized she said that they're not using that I remember it was like a mess so we can at least do that and I thought we could roll the big spools closer to like into the entry at the main hall like I thought we could still do some things so Yeah, yeah, I was going to talk to you about that whole conversation. Uh, I have third block prep. Well, I guess you have, I would say, when would be a good time to try to find you? Okay, that would probably work. Yeah, just because um, that class, they're pretty good, so. All right. Oh, no, from the reviews I read, but that's something we could maybe do there. From the reviews I read, that's a good idea. Um, once you put it together, like, you can't get it apart or <coughs> without destroying it. Yeah, it's like a one-time use. <laughs> but that's a good idea. We could do that. <laughs> Is 
Exactly. <laughs> right. Good thinking. Uh, well, that was the other thing I was going to ask if I could just like bring all the supplies. I have all this stuff just sitting in my room. I think so. Okay. <laughs> She'll probably forget. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Yep, bye. Okay, so that should have given you plenty of time to put your tree in, right? <laughs> okay, so another thing that you can do is um, even if you don't want to put a tree in, you should do little, little tiny sticks and little tiny trees is what I was going to recommend that you do. Let me, let me, oh, my paint dried. Let's say, let me finish this tree here. And then um, that is just about causing all the trees. Okay. Alright. Uh, now I have too much water. Whatever. Okay. Stuff like this. Little trees here and there would not hurt. Like little sticks. Shadow, the tree needs to have a shadow. That would look really weird. It didn't. Okay, so anyway, I typically build up brush and stuff like that along that tree line just to kind of make it look more natural. And so I don't have to put a bunch of details in the fence, you know. Um, and I don't really like that shadow. So I would, some, I would usually add like a little highlight to the tree or something if it's looking weird, you know, like it doesn't look, if it looks too flat, then I'll just mess around with it. Until I like it, but. Um, and then it doesn't have to be a bare tree, you can always throw some leaves on it. So if you, I like bear trees, I, I personally, I'd probably just leave that, but I also want to show you how to do um, background trees and brush basically. Okay, so I switch brushes for that. So for this brush I have, for this I have this um, natural one inch brush, you know, and I, I wash it and dry it so it's all bristly, right? And then I, I'm not going to use a lot of medium for this. So I'm just going to pick up some paint, like a little light green or whatever I want. And I'm tapping the palette, right, to get my brush to look bristly, right? And then I'm going to just, kind of like we did clouds, where we just kind of scrub those in. And that's like seriously not too much. Right, I'm gonna make that darker. That's Okay, so you're, you don't want your barn to just not have anything behind it, so I'm kind of popping in some background, background trees, right? Mm -hmm. Hi, Mrs. Plant. Hi, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. We gotta catch up. Okay, it's looking good.
Okay, so anyway, right, I don't know, I think that looks good. I don't want to overwork it because I think it looks pretty, pretty decent, but um, I still have some paint on my brush, so I'm just going to kind of get a little shadow in there because, hey, right, don't like to waste paint. All right, and then um, I'd say it's time to get time to get that barn in, but some of you might still be a little behind, so um, I didn't get that second layer of brass on there, so I might as well do that. Um, remember that you should get darker towards the bottom. Remember I said that? So um, what I got going on right here is I was going to put in a lake, okay? and water, like if you wanted to, but I didn't do, I didn't do my second layer, so might as well do that. Okay, so you could always be working on that if you're not sure what to do, right? Okay, and then always like kind of step back from your picture and see if it's looking okay. Like the earth and sky should reflect. So are you doing that? You know, are you getting those purples and blues or whatever you put in there? If not, make sure you are. <laughs> So I kind of went and darkened that up a little bit to make sure that I am. <coughs> so that way if I wanted to make this turn stormy, I could still get it to be stormy. All right, anyway. Okay, so for barn, I'm going to go with a white barn, like, but I don't want it to be super white, so I'm going to kind of tone down my white a little. I think a white barn would work out good for me because I want to put in maybe some sheep or something, but a red one would be just as good. Okay, so I'm not going to, I have a flat brush right now for the barn, okay, and um, a flat brush will work really well because you're just painting in like sides. Like big, like a like if you have a rectangle, you're gonna paint in the front of the rectangle, a side of the rectangle, right? <laughs> so that's where a flat brush is gonna work really well. So um, I'm not gonna worry about windows or anything like that. Just getting in the sides, right? Okay. So. And I'm pulling down to kind of give the illusion of wood. And I'm not really worried about the bottom of the barn, okay? Notice how I kind of let that just be? That's okay, because you're gonna add in some like bottom grass and whatever to kind of make that look better. Um, it's catching a weird glare on the projector there, but if you were to look at that, that does look like little individual. You'll notice it when you do it, that the paint is kind of a little thin sometimes. And, um, you'll see the lines in it. I'm gonna kind of exaggerate mine because that like didn't quite work. You don't really see it. So I'll just go in. Um, hopefully not. Yeah, not really. <laughs> there, now you can see it. <laughs> I had to exaggerate it because that white is shining for me. Yeah, 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 
Okay, you don't have to do that much of an exaggeration. You just couldn't see it in what I was doing. So, okay, but I did make one side light, one side dark, and that's a good point. Okay, I would do that. <laughs> so, um, rough. A lot of white barns had black roofs. I'm going to go black, black gray, something like that. Flat brush, same kind of thing. Okay. So it does not have to be perfect because that's where you kind of add in background like leaves and stuff and more trees or whatever, grass, and it kind of hides it. everything doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just going to kind of add in a window here and there. Right? Looks pretty natural to me. All right, the reason why it might not is because you don't have your shadows. So shadows, matte medium, same kind of thing. Pick up that little purple color. Whatever you got, thin it, you want to glaze, you want to wash it, right? So use your matte medium. You can always go darker. Right, so I tried to put like a shadow from the one kind of little awning. I went a little big on that, but whatever. And then a shadow underneath here. Underneath your other edge. You could um, pick up some white or whatever and pop in little sills and stuff. Trim, you know, stuff like that. I'm gonna go. Sometimes things catch highlights. Maybe I'll pop in something there. Well, sometimes they have little, like little um, bird kind of things, you know, the little north, south, east, west little on there, stuff like that. You can add in those little details. That that's what makes it quaint, right? Makes it unique. So I usually tend to go back over my edges to try to show like a little overhang or a little width to the trim or a little you know dimension to the to the edges. So I don't know if you can really tell, but I went back in with some black, popped in a little trim. Maybe I'll give it like a shadow on one side. Right? Okay, speaking of shadows. I need a shadow. So my shadows are being a little funny because I made them go that way and then I made my house do something different. That's okay. So one thing is sometimes you guys tend to make your barns, houses a little, a little big. I'm gonna narrow it in. So that's why putting um, brush around your barn will be a good thing because like obviously my barn right now is really outlined by black. 
right? Because I tried to like bring in my size because I was fixing it. That's okay, do that, okay? Because you can easily make that into brush. We already learned how to make brush. So I can easily fix that and not make it look like this big chunky house and actually add grass and stuff like that in, right? So I say that your biggest mistake is you guys when you put in your barn, you tend to make your your walls not look straight or they get too big and your roof doesn't fit on it right. Um, you know, structurally it looks odd. So just kind of go back in and clean it up. Like how I gave it a side, I gave it a bottom, I gave it, you know, made it, try to make it look more like a, like a structure, <laughs> not a blob, right? I'd say that's the, the biggest thing I see. It doesn't have to be white. I just went white because I thought it'd be easier with the colors I got going on and making it have a shadow and you can see what I'm doing. So you could totally go a different color. Um, and plus, I thought I'd put some sheep in. So I thought my white would go with my shape. I haven't done that right, or yet. So sheep, once again, if you want to add in any type of animal, like a cow or a sheep or whatever it is, best thing to do is to add it in into your distance. Because then you don't have to put in all your little details. Like those are sheep in the background, right? Just sure, yes. <laughs> it looks like sheep. <laughs> so um, I had gone to Scotland, and um, Scotland is typical. So what I love about Scotland is that it's uh, all really, really green because they get a lot of rain, right? <laughs> and they don't they have a lot of gray days and not a lot of sun. And so when you drive around, you just see green everywhere, but they have tons of sheep. And like, you just see these little white spots everywhere you go which is kind of, kind of cool. So, if you ever go to Scotland, one day, my little head's on them, you know. Let me give them some details. See? Okay, and then most importantly, give them a shadow. Anyway, you don't have to add these little details in. I just add because maybe you need the time or, I don't know, get a little tail on them. They don't look good enough. Okay. So um, I'm going to see what you guys got going on in the classroom here before I do anything else.
Okay, you guys are looking good. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of times for me personally, I um, I have to have you do it. Like it's easier for me to help you fix it than to just paint in your picture, right? Like I could do that, but then it's like what I did, <laughs> you know, where <clears throat> it's better if you try something and you start it, and then I can like help you, right? And then you learn maybe what you did wrong or whatever, how to make it look better. So. Sometimes if I'm not really helping you, that's why. Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, you just do it, and, you know, I'll come back. Um, okay, so moving on, and I'm, I won't keep you guys too much longer because I know that we're almost done and you need to paint too. Um, but really, like, I don't like to waste paint. Remember I talked about that? So I have all this paint on my palette. So right before you clean up, that's always what I think about. Right before I'm going to clean up, how can I use the paint that's on my palette quickly to either get another layer on or work out my shadows or make my colors come together because and like sometimes when you're painting on something you can focus on one color and then what about everything else you know there's a reason you put the colors on your palette in the first place so you use it right so like for me personally i feel like i'm not working in enough of those golden tones and i happen to have a lot of gold and everything on there so i'm gonna try to pull that back out and um work back in some of those um like my sunny kind of days. So I would do that in different ways. I'm, I just use the, the one inch brush to do that though. So uh, my one inch like bristly brush, you know, this one. Um, but basically, um, that's what I'm gonna spend the rest of my time doing. So like I said, I don't have a lot of that yellow and that green and my kind of sunny and warm kind of look. I kind of lost that. So I'm going to work that back in and um, to add to the drama, you know, like I got my darks, kind of lost my lights, and to try to help make that not look so um, outlined. And then, and then that's it. I'm going to clean up. So, okay. Anyway. Um, and the way I'm adding it is I'm always thinking about planning for the future. So I'm trying to keep that road kind of going on there and where I can pop in that way. So, you know, might as well do it now. I got some blue on my palette too. And then if I don't like it, I drive and I do something else.
Okay, so um, I know a lot of you are just kind of, you know, finishing up, but I, I like to go over why I did the things I did. So I just put in some green around my tree so it wasn't outlined in black, so it kind of just looks like, I'll add in some little, little branches or something, make it look like a little bush, you know. And then I kind of didn't like the black so much, I needed to work in some of my purple. So I got some purple in there. I even put some purple in the ground, you know. I worked in a lake over here, a little pond on the side, which I'm not crazy about. I'll probably paint over that. But if you, you know, want to try to see how some water works in there, um, go for it. And I'm still focusing on getting my road in the middle, so I still kept kind of those darks. And then I kept this dark over here, too, just to kind of balance it, you know, because I have this big, bright, white house now that I made, and what is going to offset it, you know? So, like, this is to the right of my picture. I can have something to the left. To balance it out so you know the tree and the sheep and this little bush just something as tiny as a little bush can help balance it out but also this dark that's why I left that dark there it's kind of like offset everything so when you read a landscape your eye constantly goes from left to right like clouds go kind of or right to left whatever way they go this way and then you kind of go this way and then you go back in right you want your eye to like constantly move over the piece like a landscape, so it's like sweeping the landscape, right? Um, so that's why I intentionally set up a lot of the stuff that I did and how, why I'm using the colors, why I'm keeping my values that way, stuff like that, <laughs> right? Okay. All right, and I'm gonna clean up. Um, you guys are doing good. I haven't really checked on my online guys here. How are you guys doing? Are you following along? Or I recorded this, but. I need to stop it.